In many ways, Broad is the perfect cricketer. His ability to liven up any situation by just being funnier than any other player is completely legendary within our game. I mean, world records are really for steroided up runners or swimmers in scientifically advanced cheat suits. But of course we have them in cricket as well, but we don't celebrate them or fetishize them as in the same way that a lot of other sports do. But Broad changed that today. And because of that, it was while watching him that I realized I'd actually now seen three of the four biggest scoring test overs in cricket history. And when I started looking at all these overs, I realized how much fun many of them were. And that's what Stuart Broad bowling to Jasper Boomer was. It was batshit insanity, really. England had just taken the new ball in what has been a fresh pill summer. And they were bowling to India's numbers 10 and 11. And surely the best plan of attack at this point was a bunch of slips and some random fielders out for maybe the skied miss hits of the surprise short ball. But you'd be wrong. Apparently the best plan was bowling really short and at them. This is the last knot. My dad told me to say this. And let's just look at what happens when you bowl at numbers 10 and 11 in test matches with pace by different lengths. The worst zone to a tail ender is usually the full ball. This is the impatient, quick, you know, looking for that Yorker, getting it slightly wrong. The Yorker is sensational, but the best bowlers only deliver it about 50% of the time, and most attempts end up being half volleys and full tosses. The tail doesn't like the Yorkers, but they don't mind the other balls that much. The next worst ball is the short one. And while the tail doesn't like them, any short balls in tests are going to have a high economy because any top edge or mishit can go for four or six quite easily. And there are plenty of leg buys off helmets and shoulders to go around as well. And the most important thing is that you can only have two fielders behind square on the leg side. The best lengths are unsurprisingly a good length and all back of and at the body. They keep the run rate lower and they also get the tail out more often. Now, if the ball is old or you have very fast bowlers, the short ball is still worth a go. Maybe not all in, but a go. But Broad isn't that fast anymore, and the ball was banned spanking new. This is the weirdest time to go all in on this tactic, especially as Boomerah has done this to Broad before. With all that said, the first ball this over was almost caught as Ashbit Boomerah tried to hook it. While it's not the most logical option, you could see why England tried it. It could have worked. This seemed to embolden Broad, and next ball he goes for an even shorter ball. In fact, this time it's so short that it flies over Boomerah and it flies over Billings, and it goes for five wides. So the third ball is another top edge that goes towards third before carrying the boundary and going for six. And it's a no ball as well. So that means we've had one legal ball in this over and Broad has conceded 16 runs, which is perhaps the best clue that your short ball bowling plan is, you know, not working. And Broad does try something else next ball. It's a high full toss, which I assume was supposed to be a Yorker and he must miss his length by, I don't know, eight or 10 meters. And it gets clubbed away for another boundary. And when you see the replay from side on, you wonder why this wasn't a no ball too. Meaning that really after one delivery, Broad should have given up 21 runs. Luckily for him, it's 20 runs in two deliveries. Either way, surely the idea of bowling short at people isn't working. Yet Broad keeps that same field, but actually does bowl a length ball that gets inside edged. It's very funny and weird and everyone laughs, including the Indian balcony. So Broad goes straight back to short balls again. And of course, Bormer smashes another one to the rope. However, it's even better than this because Boomer falls over and actually misses the boundary almost entirely as he's tangling with the ground. In fact, he's trying not to kick his stumps over, which he manages to do by, I don't know, a millimeter? And that all this is happening to Stuart Broad, the highest scoring tail ender in the history of the game, and also just regardless of the amount of runs, just one of the most amusing batters we have ever had. So that makes it all so much more fun. Boomer is literally doing to Broad what Broad has done to so many, but even better. But because of these last two balls, something else has happened. Broad has now conceded the most runs in and over in Test cricket history. Equal most, actually, at this point, with three others. But it's worth having a look at quite a few of these. Because at the bottom of this, Ross Taylor is against Nathan Horrence. But I like this one because Jeetan Patel is involved, and all Jeetan Patel did was hit one run. Ram Naresh Sawan smashed an over from Munaf Patel here. This one's quite fun because Sawan was not particularly an attacking player. In fact, his career strike rate is lower than Alistair Cook's. Above them on the list is Nathan Astle and Chris Cairns, who were smashing Andy Caddick. This one's awesome because that's two Kiwis smashing another one who was born there. But the most Kiwi one, and maybe the most important one, is Bert Sutcliffe and Bob Blair against Hugh Tayfield. This is probably one of the best stories in the history of Test cricket. Let's start with Tayfield, one of the best off-spinners in the game at the time from South Africa, and he was famous for never getting hit. 
In fact, let's just take that a little bit further. He's the equal lowest economy all time of bowlers with 150 wickets. No one hits it. And, of course, this is where he did get hit. And the two blokes facing him are even more interesting. Bert Sutcliffe had been hit in the head, collapsed, unconscious at the crease, went to hospital, collapsed again, came back to the ground, drank some whiskey to begin this innings. When he went out to bat, he was bleeding through his bandages, so they had to start using a towel just so he could stay out there. And he thought the innings was over with the fall of the ninth wicket, and that was because Bob Blair was thought to be back at the team hotel. And the reason of that is a real tragedy. It's because his fiance had died the day before in New Zealand's biggest ever train accident. But Blair did actually come to the ground and he did decide to bat. And Sutcliffe told him that they might as well just swing away. So they did. And from their eight ball over, they hit 25 runs off the most parsimonious bowler in test cricket history and broke a world record. Anything I tell you next is gonna feel like a bit of a letdown. But I do think it's interesting that Andy Roberts smashing Ian Botham is here because you would expect that if Botham was going to be on this list, chances are that he'd be in the other direction and being one of the batters. And the fact that it was a tail ender who did it against him is even more interesting. Mitchell Johnson made everyone think he could be an all-rounder when he smashed the famously defensive-minded Paul Harris. Here is Brian Charles Lara's first entry on this in his second last test. This one allegedly happened when Danish Canaria sledged him. Probably the second worst thing that Danish Canaria ever did. Then we get to the first one I was at, where Joe Root smashed Keshev Maharaj for 28 runs in an over. Wait, no, that's not right. Uh, oh, that's how it should be, but weirdly, it's actually Maharaj smashing Joe Root. This was funny because Root just desperately wanted a five-wicket haul in this spell, and he kept himself on for that. Instead of getting that record, he equaled a world record. And four of those runs were also buys. And I was at the next one as well. And I love this one because this is where Jimmy Anderson, the most successful bowler in the history of Test cricket, mid-career, and he was being treated by like a club bowler with a hernia. I honestly saw this. I thought Anderson was finished like forever. And weirdly, it was George Bailey who finished his brief career not long after this. I think during the rain break today, they should have actually handed the title over between Anderson and Broad. I wasn't at the other Brian Charles Lara one, but Neil Manthorpe was. And he told me that it was the second last over of the day. Mervyn Dillon had just blocked out a maiden. Everyone thought that it was fizzling out. When Robin Peterson came on to bowl and Lara decided that he must go. It's a hell of a way to get the stumps. The following over only had two runs. And that also brings it back to Broad's over to Boomerang. Because after the four balls, he had only equaled the world record. And we should talk about world records in general because they usually just get beaten by a little bit, right? This is the progression of the men's pole vault one of my favorite incremental world records. It goes slowly between people, and then just one guy keeps breaking it over and over again at a point. Though at times, obviously world records really do get broken massively. This is one of the first stories I ever told my son. It was about Bob Beeman, the incredible athlete and champion for racial rights, who broke the long jump record by lo a long way. And other athletes have done this before, but it is rare to break a world record by so much. We had Sanis J. Surya and Roshan Mahanama break the world record for the most runs in a partnership by a lot, so it has happened in cricket before. But even so, this looks a little bit more like the Bob Beeman one, doesn't it? I mean, when Broad does something, he does it well. And one thing he didn't break here was the world record for the most runs in a first class over. He was behind Shastri and Sobers, who both obviously took six sixes, but also a long way behind Bob Vang. And it's worth knowing a little bit about that. So here is something I put in the New Zealand openers piece a while back about Vance's world record. But Vance has something else to offer us. Yes, Bert Vance once allowed 77 runs from a single over. His team, Wellington, had to win their last match of the year to win the Shell Trophy. Wellington set Canterbury 291 in 59 overs. The Wellington bowlers did well, getting them 108 for 8, but Lee Jamon, who somehow never opened for New Zealand, held them at bay. With two overs left to play, Canterbury were on 196 for 8, and they were a very good chance of getting the draw. It's clear that at this point, Wellington thought they couldn't get the wickets normally. So they thought by allowing Canterbury to smash a lot of runs, they might knock something loose and allow for something magical to happen in the last over. Vance, who didn't really bowl because he was once a wicketkeeper, was asked to come on and deliver no balls that were either full tosses or long hops. And he started the over bowling already at the crease. But let me play this over out for you. Yeah, that's quite something.
but it all gets slightly better. The next over, Jamon kept slogging, and he took 17 runs from five more balls, meaning that Roger Ford was batting for the last ball, and all he needed was one run, but for some reason, he blocked it instead. And that reason is that the scoreboard operators had got lost, and Canterbury didn't even know they were that close to winning the game. So the game ended in a draw, but the scores were actually tied. And because all the other results went their way anyway, Wellington still won the Shell Trophy. But just, just one moment here. I need to go back and look at that over again because something doesn't quite seem right. Ah, yes, this is what I thought. Only five legal balls. I mean, you can't really blame the umpires or the scoreboard attendants here. This was one of the craziest overs ever. And of course it was bowled by a New Zealand over. Who else would have bowled it? An over that was absolutely stupid and ultimately had no effect on the world. I don't know what Bert Rance's story really tells us about anything, but it existed. But when I was glancing at the list of the most runs ever in a first class game, I saw something that I'd never noticed before. Malcolm Nash was the left arm bowler who was delivering to Gary Sobers for the first six sixes in first class cricket. And then just two runs back on the record, you can find Nash again. Because almost a decade later, he at the exact same ground, he almost went for 36 runs again. Nash took almost a thousand first class wickets. He was an incredible bowler and he wanted to have his ashes spread at St. Helens in where over two games, he almost went for 70 runs. And looking at Nash's record, it did get me thinking that maybe Vance or Nash was the worst bowler of an over in history. But that probably isn't true, is it? Because I had forgotten broads over to Yuvaraj Singh. When international T20 wasn't a thing, pre Mizba, Broad also broke the world record for the most runs in a T20 international when Yuvi smashed him for six sixes. And Broad still holds that record. In fact, he actually holds two of the three crowns, which means if he makes a one day comeback, he's actually a chance of unifying the world records with one person. But we haven't actually finished on his over yet. Because to break the world record, Broad was creamed by Boomerah for a six. This is the first proper shot that Boomerah actually nails in this over. And of course, it was that ball that finally meant Broad was going to try and bowl full and straight, which he did for the last one. And he bowls a very good Yorker. And it's probably the Yorker your uncle had been screaming about the whole time. And so Mohamed Siraj tries to steal a run. And so Broad and him are running right down the wicket at the same time, racing each other. And Broad picks up the ball, throws it at the stumps, and then slides through them where he scatters the stumps everywhere. And of course it was not out, but it was another perfect moment of broad in cricket. Because when you think about it, he did to those stumps what Bumrah had just done to him. <laughs>